Hi, in this video we're going to look at how to set up a scene with motion blur. This can uh, either be used as a static image or you could render out the whole sequence that we're going to create. We're going to go using this scene having an X-wing in space in an asteroid field. You can see at the moment there's no blur applied. We're going to work towards two different types of, of motion blur. The first one, and, and probably the most useful for, for a static image, would be the image where the ship is in focus, but the background and foreground are obviously afflict, affected by the, the motion of the ship. And we'll also look at how to set up the same scene where the camera is static, but the ship is zooming by. So let's just quickly have a look at uh, the start scene, just so you get an idea of what I've set up. So you can see that I have um, two planes and the X-Wing. The two planes are set up so that we have uh, a foreground plane with smaller asteroids, a background plane with large, well, a very varying sizes of asteroids, with you can just see the X-Wing in between the two camera more or less level and looking more or less again at the center of the ship. So what we need to consider is at the moment um, everything is static and we're trying to create motion blur. Therefore, we have to create motion for this effect to work. So in other words, we have to, we have to construct an animation. So let's go ahead and click on the uh, uh, timeline and animation icon. Uh, you may start off with the wizard. Just click uh, cancel or close and we'll get straight into the timeline. You also have to consider at this point just how far this ship is traveling. It's going to be traveling quite a distance. At the moment, that overall length is approximately three and a half kilometers. So it's quite a distance that it's got to travel, but by the same token, we need the ship to look like it's it's moving fairly quickly. So I'm going to guess at the moment, or, or I know already, to be honest, um, where the end of the animation should be. So I'm going to set the animation end. I right-click on the timeline, set animation end. I'm going to set it for approximately 20 seconds. That can be edited later on. So we know our ship is starting here. We know we want the ship to move. We also want the, sh the camera to move with the ship. The easiest way to do that is to select the camera, go up to the object information and click on the animation tab. And we're going to link that camera to the X-Wing. This means that where the X-Wing goes, so does the camera. And just as a quick demonstration, we'll just quickly move this along. And you can see nothing at all because nothing's moved. I've moved the camera, not the ship. Let's move the ship. And you can see the camera is moving along nicely with the ship, backwards and forwards, flying through that asteroid field quite nicely. So we're going to want to define this as the starting position. At the moment, even though the slider is at zero, we haven't told view that that is a fixed point in time. So I'm going to right click on the slider and I'm going to set a keyframe. A keyframe is just a milestone, a marker. This is telling view that at that moment, all of the properties associated with the, the X fighter are fixed. So there's our new point you can see on the bottom, that small gray rectangle. What we're going to do now is we're going to move to the end of the animation. And we're going to define the point at which we want the Starfighter to be when the animation ends. Okay. Now, because I've got, if I right click here, you can see auto keyframing switched on. Viewers recognize that the X Fighter has moved. Also, allied with that will be the camera. And it has automatically created a keyframe, which you can see just there. Okay, so over 20 seconds, and if I just do the main camera, I can press and nothing appears to happen because at the moment the 
dynamic ecosystems aren't populating. But we can see from there, from the th from the thumbnail, that the scene is changing. So the asteroids are moving in front of and behind the starfighter. So let's pick a nice position and we'll do a test render before we go any further. And we'll right click and we'll do a preview render. I'll do it to the screen so we can see what we're looking at and we'll click render. So you can see because the asteroids are a dynamic population, they've filled in the, the space accordingly. The ship is there. It looks like a nice starting point. You know, there are no rocks obscuring the ship. Um, so let's look at what we need to do for rendering this scene. If I right click on render, final quality, let's just show you what happens with final quality. It should render out with no motion blur whatsoever. For this, we need to go deeper into the render settings and we need to look at the user defined settings. So once that completes, it's completed, you'll see no motion blur. So I'm going to right click on render again. We're going to go to user settings. Now in your user settings, there'll be all sorts of things switched on and switched off. And we need to go through and examine whether or not we require those settings. I don't need any blurred transparencies. So let's not ask view to even bother doing that or blurred reflections. Soft shadows is one of those things which is entirely up to yourself. Um, I think at this stage we can say we'll just leave it for the moment and we don't require depth of field. Remember, all of this is about making sure that view isn't having to compute things that we don't require. Let's enable motion blurring and let's look at the settings. So I've distributed ray tracing, hybrid 2.5 and fast hybrid 2.5. Distributed ray tracing is going to take quite some time, so let's do a, a fast approximation. Number of passes, you'll see as your render progresses that um, it will do the render, then it will do a, a motion blur pass, and then another motion blur pass, gradually refining that motion blur. I'm going to jump in at the deep end and just move that to 10 because I want it to look fairly good. And let's see what happens. OK, so we're going to click render. The scene should pop up once it's done preparing and away it goes. So I'm just going to skip to the finished render. I'll be with you in a second. So you can see the render is completed, but the, the quality of the um, motion blurring is, is not very good. So let's go back and revisit those render settings. We had several of other options. Fast hybrid we looked at. As I said before, distributed ray tracing will take a while. So let's try hybrid 2.5D. Let's click OK and we'll click render. And I'll pause you again and join you when the render completes. So you can see the effect in the final render. Um, we have the uh, rocks in the, the background blurred. Remember that there are going to be very amount, varying amounts of uh, motion blur. The um, objects closest to the camera will be more blurred than objects further away, um, just as it works in real life. So now we've, we've looked at uh, making the ship move with the camera. Let's look at this slightly differently. Let's go back to the beginning of the animation. Let's take the camera and let's unlink it no link. So this means now when the ship moves, the camera will stay where it is, as it was back at the beginning. But it also means that the ship is moving. So as we move the camera to meet the ship, wherever the ship may be, let's find the ship. We know it's there somewhere, or it must be right at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the X-Wing end point in other or moving the beginning point and we'll move that up so that it meets the camera oh we've gone past the camera let's go back there we go let's zoom in so we can f do a little bit more fine control on that let's just move it back a little bit so more or less the center of the scene i'm not doing this particularly accurately per se just to show the difference between uh 
the two different techniques. So I'll just render that and I'll pause you guys until the render is completed. So you can see in the final image uh, the effect that uh, keeping the camera static has on the moving ship. Um, as I say, for a for a static image, this may not be as much use as the. Um, let's find it. There it is. The 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 blurred background. Uh, but uh, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Please give us some feedback on YouTube or social media. Thank you very much. Bye bye.